This video is sponsored by Ground News. Become a more informed, critical thinker about the events of the world. Use my link in the description and you'll receive 40% off their unlimited access Vantage plan. The universe is not only stranger than we imagine, it is stranger than we can imagine. JBS Haldane. All around us, in every direction, as far as the mind can fathom, and then perhaps infinitely farther, is space, our home, scattered throughout our celestial objects, phenomena, and who knows what else. Though to many, space is incredibly beautiful, to many others, it is terrifying. When thinking about or looking at images of deep space, one can't help but at least understand this fear, if not feel the terror completely. With its incomprehensible vastness, the uncertainty of what lurks within it, the mystery of its phenomena, and the monstrous nature of its objects, it isn't clear what is more unsettling about space. What we don't know, what we do know, or the massive voids of nothingness separating it all. The fear of space and celestial objects is known as astrophobia, cosmophobia, or spacephobia. What often makes something fear-provoking is the quality of being unknown. Of course, the universe is almost entirely unknown, relatively speaking. But what's somewhat unique about space is that what we do know is often equally terrifying. The more we learn about the cosmos often does not make what was previously unknown less disquieting, but rather, more. With newfound knowledge, we continually discover that, out there, surrounding us, are conditions that would make our worst nightmares feel like safe havens. Consider just planets. When we think of space, planets often feel like bases of solace amidst the chaos and nothingness. In some cases, this is true. But in most cases, it couldn't be further from the truth. Many planets are not only completely uninhabitable, but they are also unfathomably strange and horrifying. They are not the soft, plush, cute objects of our baby mobiles. No, hanging above our cribs were mostly gaseous beasts, so inhospitable, so absurd, so other, it would make a baby's head explode, figuratively and literally. Take a planet in our own solar system, Jupiter. Jupiter is a gas giant 11 times wider than Earth. For reference, imagine a grape next to a basketball. In terms of volume, Jupiter could fit 1,300 Earths inside it. It is so big and hostile that if Earth ever found itself in Jupiter's orbit, it would become destroyed by the effects of its gravitational force. If Earth somehow collided with Jupiter, it would be absorbed by Jupiter's atmosphere, burned up and coalesced into its gas clouds and liquid metallic, like a drip of food coloring being dropped into the ocean, completely absorbed and wiped from existence. With even the most impressive and impermeable theoretical technology, to try to navigate this planet would be a nightmarish journey through miles deep, rapid swirling gas clouds with wind speeds hundreds of miles per hour, each mile further getting darker and darker as the sunlight becomes increasingly shrouded by the clouds until you finally hit the outer mantle of the planet and submerge into a planet-wide ocean of glowing, white-hot liquid metallic hydrogen. Since there isn't even a true surface on Jupiter, there is nowhere else to go or stand. That's just in our solar system. Prior to the year 1992, humanity didn't even know for sure if there were other planets outside our solar system. There are. Known as exoplanets, it's now estimated that there are around 200 billion planets in our galaxy alone. It's also estimated that there are possibly as many as 2 trillion galaxies in the known universe. That makes for an estimated 20 to 100 quintillion planets. Amongst these, there are innumerable Earth-like planets. There are also innumerable hellscape-like planets. Planets that would embarrass the planets of our solar system. The planet known as HD 189733b, located in the constellation of Opecula, around 64.5 light-years away from our solar system, appears to be a beautiful bright blue Earth-like planet with soft oceanic swirls forming marble-like patterns that look like a refreshing work of Van Gogh. On it, however, are conditions so gruesome, merciless, and strange, it sounds like the setting of a cosmic horror fiction story written by the most disturbed individual. On HD 189733b, temperatures can exceed 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Its winds reach up to 5,400 miles per hour, seven times the speed of sound, which are the fastest winds ever discovered in the universe. And its constant wind whips rainstorms of molten glass shards sideways across the planet. 
Visiting this planet would result in being caught in a fiery cosmic tornado made up of chunks of glass that shred you apart with near infinite cuts. This is just planets. Stars, beautiful twinkling little orbs of light found in the favorite nursery rhymes of children are unfathomably more massive and powerful than nearly all planets. Jupiter is roughly 11 times wider than Earth. Our sun is roughly 10 times wider than Jupiter and our sun is an average star at best. One of the largest known stars, a red supergiant named WOHG64, has an estimated radius of over 1,540 times that of our sun. If this star was placed at the center of our solar system, it would take up the entire orbits of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter. More than a million Earths could fit in our sun. Several billions of our sun could fit in WOH G64. That's quadrillions of Earths. This star is like a universe in its own right, just made of hot, luminous gas and energy thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. A true hell. Twinkle, twinkle. When massive stars like WOH G64 die, they form even stranger, larger, more powerful and ominous entities perhaps the most unfathomable and unsettling entities in the known universe. After a star exhausts its fuel and the equilibrium of its radiation and gravity becomes disrupted, its core collapses and in a fraction of a second, it implodes on itself, resulting in a supernova explosion. If the star is large enough, left behind is a black hole, a region of space-time where gravity is so strong, nothing can escape it. Inside, at the center of a black hole, is what is known as a singularity, which is a point that is infinitely dense and infinitely small, and all conceptions of time and space break down. Why does the collapsing of a star do this? How can there be an apparent singularity or infinitely dense and infinitely small thing in the universe? What happens at the singularity or beyond the singularity? Does the singularity even really exist? We don't know the answers to any of these questions. But what we do know is that these galactic giants can grow to sizes so incomprehensible that they make even the largest stars seem average. One of, if not the largest known black hole in the observable universe is Tun 618. This black hole is at least 240 billion miles in diameter and likely much bigger since it is still and continually growing. That's roughly 11 solar systems side by side. Galaxies worth of matter are consumed by this beast as it shines with the brightness of 100 trillion stars. What could possibly be bigger than that? Surely nothing. Well, that's exactly right. The inconceivably massive void separating everything, the cold, barren space between galaxies and superclusters of galaxies, make even Tun 618 look modest. In general, intergalactic space, or the space between galaxies, makes up most of the volume of the universe. What are known as supervoids are specific regions where there are particularly massive spans of empty space with far fewer galaxies and objects compared to all other regions of the universe. One obscenely terrifying supervoid is known as Boötes Void, or the Great Nothing. Boötes Void has a diameter of around 330 million light years. The black hole Tun 618 has a diameter of around 0.04 light years. That makes Boötes Void roughly 8.25 billion times bigger than one of the largest black holes in the universe. That's 330 million of mostly uninterrupted light years of primarily cold, dead, dark space. The mere thought of this vast emptiness can, paradoxically, elicit an intense feeling of constriction and claustrophobia. What could possibly be worse than this? Well, it gets worse. Perhaps the most unsettling fact and phenomenon of the universe is that Boötes Void and all voids and the universe in general are expanding. Everything is spreading out. Everything in space, including us, is constantly moving, hurtling at speeds we can't even fathom. Right now, we are not simply rotating around our planetary axis and revolving around the sun, but our galaxy and the group of galaxies we are a part of, known as the local group, are moving through space at 1.3 million miles per hour. As a result of the universal expansion toward disorder, eventually, nearby galaxies will aggregate and then be spread further and further apart from the rest of the universe. In the distant future, we will become so far apart from other galaxies and galaxy clusters that they won't even be detectable or knowable anymore, no matter what technology a species might have. 
If humanity, or any consciously advanced species, exists in these new galaxy formations, it will appear as though the entire universe is only one's own galaxy. It will appear as though that's all the universe ever was, is, and could be. One can only wonder what is out there right now that we no longer have access to. In the words of the renowned astronomer Edwin Hubble, with increasing distance, our knowledge fades and fades rapidly. Eventually, we reach the dim boundary, the utmost limits of our telescopes. There, we measure shadows and we search among ghostly errors of measurement for landmarks that are scarcely more substantial. Right now, floating through the vast uncertainty of space, alongside these celestial monsters, are the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 interstellar space probes. These space probes were launched by NASA in 1977. Voyager 1 is currently the farthest traveled man-made object in space. On both Voyagers, there is what is known as the Golden Records. On these records are images, music, earthly sounds, spoken greetings, as well as instructions and symbols for the record and its origin. If everything else about space isn't unsettling enough, consider the fate of these space probes. The Voyagers and other space probes will potentially continue to float aimlessly through space for billions of years. If they do, at some point in the distant future, or even the not-so-distant future, they will be all that's left of humanity, of Earth. The images and sounds and technology contained therein will no longer have a species to point to. Even if, rather, in the theoretically seeming best of cases, humanity makes it the whole distance alongside these space probes, Figuratively speaking, these space probes will still eventually dissolve away. And so too will humanity. So too will everything. Though we can never be certain of how everything will go, it would appear that the universe itself will reach its ultimate end. All energy is limited. Everything is decaying. The voids are growing. And one final void will consume all things forever. In the words of the author H.P. Lovecraft, the most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. The sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little, but someday the piecing together of disassociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality and our frightful position therein that we shall either go mad from the revelation or flee from the deadly light into the peace and safety of a new dark age. This passage was written by Lovecraft in 1928, around a hundred years ago. In some ways, one could argue that those terrifying vistas of reality are now open for many of us. The progression of humanity's sciences, technologies, and awareness has revealed a vast, terrifying, and indifferent universe of which we are inescapably a part of. The fear of space is not totally irrational. In many ways, it is fully justified. But the best way to deal with certain fears, sometimes, is exposure. Exposure to the object of the phobia, so that one can see that, although terrifying, it is not as dangerous as it appears. Look up. Look at the unending space of burning balls of fire and planets of gas and molten liquid. Look at the unending expanding void. Here you are, alive on a planet that doesn't swallow you up and rip you apart, that doesn't send glass shards through your skin or burn you alive. You are at a place in the cosmos, positioned just right, at just the right time, that's just the right size, for life to emerge, to evolve, and to create you, to allow you to know you exist, to feel love, happiness, pleasure, pain, fear. To be afraid is a kind of blessing. From this planet, you can watch as you rotate away from one of the most powerful phenomena in the cosmos. You can watch the sun as it sets and see and feel so much beauty that it can make your eyes welt up with wonder and appreciation. That object would kill you from a different distance, but it gives you life from this distance. Rides are fun because they're scary, and for whatever reason, this ride is still going. Open your eyes, put your hands up, scream if you have to, and enjoy the fear while you can still feel it. Despite the enormous and ominous nature of space, humanity has and continues to square up against it. 
Last month, SpaceX's Starship test highlights both humanity's hubris and our unbelievable abilities to extend our reach more and more into the unknown. With this video sponsor, Ground News, I can follow and understand this monumental event with simple curated access to all 170 articles covering the story, which you can access as well using my link or by scanning the QR code on the screen. At the top of Ground News' article page, we find a succinct summary of the SpaceX story from various perspectives, politically left, right, and center, and how these sources convey information differently. We can also see that only 12 of all the articles covering the story come from right-leaning sources, so if you don't engage with left-leaning sources, or don't go through the process of intentionally diversifying your news sources, you could easily miss this story. This is true across the thousands of news stories collected from around the world by Ground News. Each story is organized in one place and then provided with context on the various sources reporting on it so that you can think critically and understand what is most likely happening. With Ground News' blind spot feed, unlike most internet algorithms that cater to our base desires or pre-existing beliefs, Ground News helps us expand our perspectives and step outside our echo chambers, exposing us to not only new ideas, but also important events that we might otherwise miss. Go to ground.news slash pursuit or use the link in the description to subscribe today. If you sign up using my link, you'll get 40% off their Vantage plan and unlimited access to all their features. Ground News is a genuinely exciting display of human innovation, technology, and interest in truth and goodness. All we have is the structure and order of our civilizations down here on Earth. And down here, in our unbelievable and unlikely positions, we need to be aware of what's happening so we can remain effectively involved, careful, prepared, hopeful, and excited. And of course, as always, thank you so much for watching in general, and see you next video.